Hey there, folks. One of these Game Boys is not what it seems. That's right, this one's the odd one out. So this is a uh, regular Game Boy Color. Um, I've probably done at least two different videos on this one in particular. Did the uh, Q5 backlight kit on it. Did the funny playing um, LED buttons. Um, I don't know, I don't remember. If I think about it, I'll throw links in the, des in the description for this bad boy. But this bad boy is not the point of this video. These two bad boys are. So these are special in that they are um, Game Boy Colors made with 100% aftermarket parts. So this thing still has an original Game Boy Color motherboard in it. Uh, you can see that beneath the clear plastic. Yeah, it's got a new screen, um, but you know, it's still got the original power supply, still got the original speaker, still got the original motherboard, CPU, etc. Um, pretty much everything in here is bolted onto the original boards. Whereas these two, there's not a single Nintendo OEM part in these things. Uh, so this, let me go ahead and boot that bad boy up. You notice uh, the screen is even a little bit bigger. Uh, so, what this is, this is a full recreation of the Game Boy Color, um, like I said, using all aftermarket parts, uh, Funny Playing already made uh, cases for these things, they already made screens, buttons, membranes, uh, everything except for the motherboard, um, and well, now they make the motherboard too. Um, so what's very interesting, what's very fascinating about this compared to some of the other aftermarket um, Game Boy replacements out there is um, this one works with original carts. Um, pretty much like an analog pocket. Uh, the difference being, of course, this only does Game Boy and uh, Game Boy Color games. It does not do Game Boy Advance. Uh, but in my opinion, that's okay. Um, this form factor doesn't exactly suit Game Boy Advance, and um, as rumor has it, Funny Playing is also working on a Game Boy Advance version of this. Uh, I think they just wanted to get their uh, Game Boy Color, you know, get get the core of the machine created, get the bugs worked out, and then once they've got the core, um, you know, nice and, and stable, they can port that core to something else. Uh, so I in fact recommended to Funny Playing that they um, they take this, everything that this is, and then put it in a Game Boy Pocket housing. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but you plug it in, you play your games, it just works. Uh, now the thing is, this is designed to be a Game Boy replacement. This is not designed to be an analog pocket competitor, so all it does is play your game cards. If you're looking at something like this going, oh yeah, I'll throw a micro SD card in there and you know, throw all my ROMs on there. Well, good luck with that. Functionally, this doesn't do anything that a regular Game Boy doesn't do, uh, with the exception of, um, you know, it gets, it gets a lot louder. Let me, uh, we have a full OSD for all of the controls. The built-in amplifier and speaker are <laughs> way better than anything you'll ever get out of a regular Game Boy, that's for sure. But yeah, I don't know. I... It, it, it just works at this point. It's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm kind of dancing around the subject here. I have two of these on my desk and I've only handled one of them so far. Um, I did actually do a video on this yellow one when I received it. This is the original prototype that I got and this is a revised prototype. Um, as far as I know, actually, this version is the final hardware, whereas this was just some test hardware. Uh, but I did a video on this. I'll link it in the description. Um, I was told I could publish it, but I opted not to. Um, so I'm going to leave that video unlisted, uh, but like I said, I'm going to link it just for posterity's sake. The reason I didn't publish it was because I did not want to give a bad first impression. Um, this one has quite a few issues with it. Um, 
the biggest ones being cart compatibility. So this is a regular copy of Pokemon Silver, or Crystal, excuse me. It's in a uh, beat up case, but it is a US Maskrom soldered onto a Japanese cart. And it does not work as this thing was originally. We can get through the um, opening sequence, but watch what happens when I skip to the menu. All right, all right, so far so good. Maybe you notice the sounds a little bit off. Let's try continuing. And oh look, now we're in the PC. And it's crashed. So with this older version of the core, um, there were actually quite a few game compatibility issues and I didn't want to show off, hey, there's this cool new thing that's coming out, except that it's not gonna work with any of the games you wanna play on it. Um, Funny Playing has been uh, testing, doing a lot of their testing with Japanese copies of carts in particular. So if you're like me and you're not really interested in playing the Japanese copies, um, you might be a little out of luck. Um, they did send me and a few others some of these bad boys to try and um, to try and help them fix the compatibility issues, and um, so far we've got most of them knocked out. I've got a whole stack of carts off to the side that we're going to go through, but first and foremost, I want to pull this thing apart and show you what makes it tick. Uh, so if we go into the battery compartment, you might notice a familiar looking battery cell. This is the exact same battery cell that Funny Playing uses in their Game Boy Color battery mods and their Game Boy Advance battery mods. The housing itself is modified. So on the bottom here you have a hole for a USB type C cutout. Uh, unfortunately this alignment does not uh, grok with the uh, Giltessa battery mods. So if you're looking at this shell going, oh yeah, I'm going to swap in my uh, my existing Game Boy. Sorry, it's, it's not going to work. The ports are in two totally different spots. I've already checked. You'll have to, you'll have to take my word on that because I don't have a Game Boy handy with one of those mods. Um, but it doesn't line up and I was totally disappointed. Anyway, aside from that modification on the bottom, the housing does appear to be the same as a stock Game Boy Color housing, or at the very least a um, Funny Playing laminated Game Boy Color housing. It is my understanding that this particular housing was also just a uh, test shot, which I mean, in all fairness, it's better than the one they gave me with the first one, but also, in their defense, they sent me this and a shell for it, so I just never got around to putting the shell in. Um, where is this one? It already came like that. Uh, but one of the things that Funny Playing noted they're not done with is they want to get this part cleaned up. Uh, you notice the finish on this area is actually quite rough compared to the rest of the shell. Uh, as well, there is no labeling on there versus, well, that's not a good example, is it? Because it's on the top <laughs> versus the uh, rest of the shell, which has labeling right there on this side. Uh, I don't think there's anything on the bottom, but on their other shells, they have the, uh, the labels right there. Uh, but anyway, once we've got the back off, comes apart exact same as any other Game Boy, you can get ahead and take a good look at the innards of this bad boy. Uh, so one of the things that uh, Funny Playing had initially told me when they were first starting this project was they wanted 100% feature parity with the original Game Boy Color, which is why up here there are these uh, footprints for IR LEDs, transmitter and receiver. Now, unfortunately, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why these are being omitted right now. Um, maybe they had a hard time getting the compatibility right. I don't know. Uh, all I know is it looks like they were planning it at one point, but don't count on it actually working. Um, the link port, on the other hand, does have full compatibility. I have tested with this particular Game Boy Color, in fact, and you know, you can plug them in together and you can just trade in Pokemon or play multiplayer tre Tetris or anything like that. Uh, but 
Anyway, that's probably not what you're interested. You're probably interested in this bad boy. So this is the brains of the operation. This is uh, some big Gowin FPGA. I don't know the specific model number. Um, maybe you can make it out, even though it's even though they tried lasering it off there. Um, I don't know. There there can't be that many FPGAs in this footprint with the specs needed to run this thing. So. Nonetheless, uh, let's continue our tour here. Here's the FPGA. Here is all of the main power generation for the flash cart, or flash cart for the FPGA here and for the LCD. Uh, so this part, I don't know what make that is. Sorry, my camera is not in the same spot it usually is. Uh, but I can make out the text on there. That is EA3059. Uh, next line, uh oh, my eyes are failing me. That's 6Q79DM. Um, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be anything fancy. There's four, uh, chokes here, linear inductors, excuse me, um, which indicates to me this thing is probably shooting out four different voltage rails. I don't know what it is. I don't think it really matters too much, uh, but this is powering this chip in the screen. A um, few other passives in here, these, to be honest, I don't know exactly what they are, but they almost look like more power regulation. Um, don't quote me on that, I don't, I don't know for sure. This one down here is the EEPROM flash that contains the code that this FPGA runs. Um, which might be important later. We'll, we'll get, we'll get back to that. Uh, down here we have some voltage regulation. I'm guessing this is, um, the, the power input and or battery charging circuit, uh, right here. I believe this is the audio amp given the proximity to the speaker. It makes sense. Nintendo put theirs right here up by the cart slot and by the volume wheel, which on this thing, we've got a nice um, rotary encoder. It never really made that much sense up here, but you know, it was nice and uh, compact at the very least. Down here, it makes a little bit more sense because that's where the speaker and the headphone jack is. Uh, you might also notice that they're doing a totally different speaker. Uh, now these speakers are not compatible with Game Boy Colors, at least not drop in. Um, they are, quite literally drop in into this console, uh, but these are significantly more powerful than anything a Game Boy can hope to drive without amplification. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside for now. Um, and I think that's it for this side of the board. We do have this power switch. I'm kind of hoping he swaps this out because this is a three position switch. You can hear it click in the middle there. And it kind of feels weird switching it on. Um, this bottom option and this middle option, there is these two do the same thing, whereas this top option turns the console on. Uh, as far as I am aware, this does use a uh, soft latching switch, so this part itself, unless it wears out mechanically, should never need to be serviced. Thank God. Uh, unlike on the original Game Boy, which passed all the current through it. All right, three more screws and we'll get this bad boy apart. And because this uses the exact same Q5 LCD that their mods do, um, it kind of hinges apart like a book, uh, but because there's an adapter here, I think it's actually a lot easier to disconnect at the screen rather than at the board side. So it might be a little bit easier to tilt this up and kind of bend that ribbon if, if you're taking one of these things apart. And let me grab the spudger. Oop. See if I can't get that disconnected. Excellent. And then that's it. 
The screen just plugs straight into the board. There's no converter or anything. This thing is only compatible with Q5 LCDs. It's not going to take any Game Boy Color backlight kits or anything like that. Um, but now we are left with the front and there are four ICs here. Uh, this first one at the top left is right next to the link port. I have absolutely no idea what it does and I have not looked it up either. Uh, can we get a focus please? Thank you, thank you. You can probably see that, but the first line is 24C64. Second line is SEAH. Third line is HGSEMI. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea what that does. Uh, these next two will cover the microcontroller last, uh, but these next two, um, these look to be connected up to the address lines on the cart bus. Uh, so this is probably just a level shifter. This part is LJ245A, next line 89K, uh, and there's a G4 with a line under it, and then third line DJL8. Uh, this is a Texas Instruments part. See, I recognize that one. Um, this one to the left here, first line YF04E, second line 5CK and then a G4 with a line under it again and then third line AST3 man I keep doing that off camera I'm sorry my phone is totally backwards from how it usually is you can, you can see that in the reflection um, so I'm used to holding things under the left hand side to catch them under the camera module but the camera module is on the right hand side now so you'll have to new desk layout will We'll have to get used to it together. I'm sorry. I'm going to work on it. Um, and then the last part of interest on the front here is this microcontroller. This is a CH32V203, next line C8T6, last line 31171TD08. Uh, so this is doing, I think it's just doing one thing right now. And what this does, when you plug this bad boy in over USB to a computer and switch it on, this is what's hooked up to that USB port. This will present this chip over USB, and then you can copy the update files straight to this device over USB. Uh, now, the thing is, the update files are encrypted. Um, I haven't dug any deeper than that, uh, so I don't know what specifically is in there but this is decrypting them and then writing them to this unit. Um, the update files are extremely important because, I mean, I, I, I showed you the compatibility of this thing and it wasn't great, but I've also got another one of these motherboards. Now this one is out of one of the initial prototypes like this yellow one here, and you'll note some key differences. The FPGA side of the thing, everything's pretty much identical. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if there are zero differences, aside from maybe a part here and there moved over to accommodate this bad this bad boy on the front now. Um, but they just went ahead and dremeled the chip markings off instead of having it lasered. The bottom, a little bit different, we notice there's no pads for this, um, wow, I'm having a brain fart. That's a switch. <laughs> That's a button. Uh, there's no pads for that button or the resistor diode or whatever that is next to it. Um, I, I, I don't know, but it might be the result of something that I mentioned to Funny Playing. I asked them, hey, if you're going to make this fit into a Game Boy Color form factor, can you please add uh, compatibility for your... Um, button LED mods or just bake them right into the board. So I'm thinking that's what this is the precursor for. Uh, unfortunately there are no pads that we can solder that thing to or pads for the LEDs themselves, but I don't know. Maybe we'll get there eventually. Uh, let me pull that adapter out. And then on the front, aside from the sticker that I have no idea what that means, you notice few little differences. The lack of the microcontroller means this one is not updatable, which is actually a problem because it, it 
kind of sucks in its current iteration. Uh, but you can see based off of the markings on this board that it's actually a pretty recent, um, recently manufactured thing and relatively early as far as their development goes, being version 0.08. Uh, if they do versions like I do, that means this is the first board that they've designed. You design one board, you proof it, and then you have the next one made. Um, you know, V0.1, you print on paper, V0.2, you ha have the fab printed or, or something like that. Uh, I don't always follow that religiously, but I don't know. It's easier to keep track of that way. Um, but otherwise, most things are pretty similar. Uh, they went ahead and added a connector for the speaker down there, which makes things a lot easier to assemble. Or at the very least, they moved the connector. <laughs> it's in a much better spot now. Uh, but otherwise, the bottom half looks pretty similar to um, bodges aside. I don't know what was going on here, but this inductor's moved over a pad and then the... Yeah, I don't know. But they fix it on the... Uh, quote unquote retail one. But anyway, this is the one that allegedly they're going to ship. We'll see about that. I don't actually know. And this is just an old version that I have laying around for uh, fun. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Well, that's that's still a, an open debate. I'm not getting rid of it. Don't ask. Um, I don't know. I was I was contemplating, you know, maybe I should maybe I should try and cut it up and shove it in a pocket or something. That'd be pretty fun. Um, but anyway, that's that's a topic for another time. If you want to see my original video on that thing, I will have it linked in the description. It is unlisted. Um, it was all right. Anyway, the reason I took this apart is because I actually wanted to reshell it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these buttons out and I'm going to leave this LCD in the casing because, well, I got to put that other one back together at some point, but also because I um, didn't want to go too far out of my comfort zone. I went ahead and ripped the LCD out of the other one already, but we're going to reshell it in what I think is one of the only two appropriate housings for this bad boy. All right. Eh, eh. So it's just a regular Q5 LCD laminated to a slightly even more custom lens. Um, more on that, I guess, in a moment. Uh, but the difference between these lenses and the regular Game Boy Color lenses is, like, this one has the the logo cut out in the bezel so that the LCD illuminates it, whereas this one is full screen. Uh, so it's the same LCD, which means that to make it full screen, it's actually not using integer scaling anymore. Um, I have mixed feelings on it. Uh, I think... I think the aesthetic doesn't work for all games. I think it leaves weird scaling artifacts in some cases. But for the most part, I, I I don't actually mind it. I think having a, a bigger LCD is um, it's all right. I don't know. Are we feeling the black buttons? Yeah, we'll stick with the black buttons for now. All right. So I need this thing. I genuinely think it is easier to connect this to the motherboard first. And then to snap that on there. Okay, I'm doing this by hand then. Gotta make sure that's lined up. Need like three hands for this. And maybe you're not me and you think it's easier to snap this on and then slip that into the flat flex connector and 
Maybe you're right. But, I don't know. It's not too bad. So we've got that in there. This should just drop in. And indeed it do. So let's get some screws in here. And conveniently, the only color uh, housing that I have with the USB-C cutout matches the color print I have. How convenient. <laughs> or printed shell. So I got this from uh, Retro Game Repair Shop, of course. I will throw a link in the description, though I don't know if it's still a stocked product. Um, it might not be because I've been sitting on this for months, um, maybe close to a year. And I remember they sent it to me because, and I quote, this seems like something you would be really interested in. And they went out of stock really quickly. So I saved one for you and retro vice. You were right. This is fantastic. It's such a wonderful print. You did such a good job with this. I wanted to save it for the right build. All right, gotta slip that rubber condom back on. Oh, and it fell off again. Well, actually it's silicone for uh, authenticity, I guess. than let it fall out, let's use gravity to our advantage. And this should definitely go in before the motherboard. <laughs> Condom's not vital, of course, but it is going to prevent a lot of rattling and it is going to seal it in there nicely. That's it. Easy peasy. I'll just have to get a uh, sticker printed up for this bad boy. It deserves a custom sticker, I think, now that it has a custom housing. All right, and hopefully I did not destroy that LCD when I was removing it. I really should have used heat. I did not. And I don't have another one. Unless I rip apart another one of these highly limited Game Boys. <laughs> um, I can get more eventually. These are, uh, as far as I know, these are the final part. Ooh. I need to remove that middle screw. Which is interesting because I could have sworn I removed it like it was installed. But I can see just by the way the light's reflecting off the battery compartment that that screw is going to make me a real unhappy camper if I leave it. I don't know. Don't don't mind me rambling. This is obviously not this is still not the final hardware. I don't know how these things are going to be coming from funny playing. Um so I guess while I'm screwing this back together, I can talk about some of the things that I do know. Um I know that funny playing wants to release this thing at a extremely competitive price. 
uh, so competitive, in fact, that I guarantee you it's going to be cheaper to just buy this one or all of the parts to make this one than it will be to make a uh, Game Boy Color, like to, to mod up one of these bad boys. Um, especially uh, if you want feature parity. So for example, this thing comes with a rechargeable battery. Game Boy Color is not rechargeable, you'd have to convert it. This thing comes with a backlight kit, which obviously the Game Boy Color never had a backlight. Not originally. Um, the USB updatableness is neat, but obviously doesn't apply to the original game, but oh, that looks so sick. Okay. Um, I don't know what prices specifically, but if I recall correctly, Funny Playing was aiming to have the whole kit and caboodle available for less than a hundred bucks. Which is obviously really compelling since for regular Game Boy Color, the backlight kit alone is like 60 bucks. Hey, I didn't break it. That's nice. Excellent. Okay. So let's continue with some of the tests in here. Uh, so, like I said, it's compatible with most carts. Um, there are still a few lingering compatibility issues that we're trying to work out, but I think it's all right. Let me go ahead and go in game so we can discuss the OSD. I'm going to turn the volume down on this thing so that I don't have to raise my voice to talk over it because <laughs> it's very loud. Um, there is a, this is an engineering firmware version I've been told, and there will still be some changes between um, the version I have now and the version I'm showing off uh, and the final version. Um, one of them I was told is that the lowest volume level, which is this, it doesn't get quieter than that, it just goes off. They will tweak that because we uh, put a game in this Game Boy Color here. And like I said, stock hardware. This is maxed out. <laughs> that's, that's as loud as a regular Game Boy Color gets. And this thing instantly overpowers it at the lowest volume level. It gets way louder. <laughs> but anyway, let me kill that overhead light so there's less glare on the screen. Um, so you get into the OSD by clicking the wheel in. On my engineering version, whenever you power the thing up, the OSD comes up. But on the retail version, it's going to be a little bit more like this, where you turn it on, it just turns on and you have to click it to get the OSD. Uh, but there are also quite a few features in here. So first, let's cover this top one, which is DISP or display. Uh, it comes with four options. You have full, full with pixel grid, which I think is probably not the greatest option because like I said, the scaling is not even. Uh, and because of that, neither is the pixel grid. And I don't know, it just looks kind of plaid. It's weird. Um, but full screen by itself isn't too bad. Uh, of course, if you look real closely, especially at text, you'll notice inconsistencies in the widths of some of the letters, uh, like especially in the word city. Notice how thin the back of that C is versus how thick I and T are. Yeah, that's... If you look close, you'll find problems, but if you don't look that close, it's probably fine. Uh, next up, we have X4, which is integer scaling and the exact size of one of the Game Boy Color kits and the exact position of one of the Game Boy Color kits. So if you wanted to, and you were in a bind, you could set your console to the X4 scaling and then swap in one of these regular laminated LCD displays, uh, LCD assemblies, excuse me. Um, the downside to that, I should have just muted it, 
is that your logo won't glow, but you know, at least you have an option for replacements. Though, by the time this thing comes out, I, I don't think that's necessarily going to be an issue. Um, X4 and then X4P, which is the same integer scaling, but with one of the pixel grid options. Now, unfortunately, Funny Playing hasn't bothered porting any of the other pixel grid options. Um, I have asked them to at least try and hit feature parity with their other Q5 hardware. Um, we'll see if this thing releases with that. Uh, but if not, you know, it is always USB updatable. Um, I'm going to set that back to full just so it looks a little bit better on camera. Um, next up, we have Core. Now we have two options GB and GBC. I left mine in GBC because that's what I needed to boot up Pokemon Crystal. But if we set it to GB, save, and then reset the console, you notice it, it looks a little bit more like a Game Boy Pocket. Well, that's because it's booting in the Game Boy Pocket core, or the original Game Boy. I don't, I don't know which is which. But which, of course, doesn't work with the Game Boy Color game. How about that? Uh, but we can always just set it back to Game Boy Color, save and reset. Um, reset, by the way, resets the console as is. Save will save the settings. So you could set your display scaling to something else and reset it all day long. You notice it resets back. Whereas if I were to hit save and then reset, it would have kept my display scaling. The next options aren't going to be too useful in Game Boy Color mode, at least not with a Game Boy Color exclusive game. Oh, I'm trying to remember what game I was having that trouble with. I don't know, but let's try... Is it Fortress of Fear? No, let's try Zaius. So this is just a uh, flash cart, one of the retro stage ones. And it should be flashed with um, Zass, which, as you know, is one of my favorite uh, tester games for uh, backlight kits. You might notice I don't have a cursor. That's because this game does not work on this console, not in Game Boy Color mode. Notice there are no sprites either. You can hear the game running, you can hear that I just died, but it's it's unplayable in this stage as is. But that gives us more options because we can go in here and you see there is a frame mix option that I can turn on and that fixes the flickering in Zass and makes it look quite a bit better in my opinion. That's the FRM feature in the other kits. Uh, however, I'm going to go ahead and set this to GB core, save and reset. And now you notice things are looking a little bit more like a original Game Boy instead of a Game Boy game running on a Game Boy Color. But look at that! I have my sprites. I can see the enemies. I can shoot. I can fight. Fixing this game in the Game Boy Color core is a low priority for funny playing. I've already brought it up with them. They're already aware. Um, but since it works fine in the Game Boy core, they're less concerned about making sure it works in Game Boy Color Core. They're, they're focusing first on games that don't work at all. Not games that work if you do a slight workaround. Okay, before I get totally distracted, pause that, go back in the menu here, check out the next option, which is P-A-L-T, or Palette, and we can change that around. And you see it's, it's just color palettes. Um, it is my understanding that this option only works in the Game Boy mode, even though it is visible in Game Boy Color mode as well. But, uh, 001 is just black and white, like most default kits. 01 is, you know, colored a little bit like a DMG, I guess. 02 is colored a little bit like a Game Boy Pocket. 03, I believe, was colored like a Game Boy Light. And... 
No, that was 0, 4. I don't remember what 0, 3 is. Um, and then the rest of these, I, I honestly don't know. I think he was just making stuff up, which is fine, but, you know, I just can't say what they're from, because I don't know. But, you get the idea. Go into the menu here, and that's everything but this GBC disp option. So the GBC disp option was not available in the original firmware, so it's not something that I, I was uh, accustomed to using. I don't actually know what it does. All I know is that sometimes in some games, some of the sprites don't display properly. So I want to say in Pokemon Yellow, or was it Pokemon Red? Um, I swear I have one laying around somewhere. Let me go find it. Ah, I should have known. In my gold Game Boy Color with all the Gen 2 stuff, I left Pokemon Yellow. <laughs> anyway. It is my understanding that sometimes the sprites don't display properly and switching that option will fix it. I believe you have to be in the Game Boy Color Core mode. Uh, we are currently in the Game Boy Core mode. So just, you know, as a um, litmus test, I guess. Mute that again. Okay, yeah, so it's not happening right now. So what will happen sometimes is like half of the sprite in Pokemon, the right half will just be black and it'll be for every sprite on the screen and it's it's just weird. I don't I don't understand what's going on. But if we change that, it doesn't do anything in Game Boy mode, we have to set it to Game Boy Color mode and then reset. And then here we go. Yeah, see, palettes don't do anything in Game Boy Color mode, eh, as expected. Leave that on four. Um, but you notice this is changing the color. So if we look at Pikachu's tail down here in Game Boy Color, in this GBC disp GBC option, the um, colors are appearing like it should appear on a Game Boy Color. If we set that to GB, Pikachu has blue cheeks now. I don't really know. I don't I don't fully understand what's going on here. Um, gosh, and I wish I remembered which game it was that was having the problem. Oh, well, that's not the same problem I was thinking of, but that's a problem nonetheless. Um, my sprites look a little funny still, so I'm, I'm gonna switch that back to GBC, and now my sprites look normal. Um, and don't forget, I've been changing this without saving. Um, obviously, you want to hit save if you want to remember that setting, uh, but the game seemed to play. It only seems to be a visual issue. I don't know. We're working on it. So that's where we're at. There's still a lot of compatibility um, quirks to be worked out, but the gameplay itself seems to be working as intended, uh, which is a fantastic step up from... But anyway, um, unfortunately it's not just drop-in, uh, like I'm sure some of you guys have heard of this thing before uh, this is the analog pocket famously known for its compatibility you just drop any game in there and it just works but of course getting one of these things can be a um, hassle in and of itself, but see, there you go. You just plug it in. It just works. I didn't have to fuss with any of the settings. It was good. But that's not the point of this video. This is... So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Funny Playing has 
mentioned that they plan on releasing this very soon. Uh, it is currently September as I'm filming this back in... Gosh, I think it was July. They were ready to just push these things out on the shelf. So it literally could be any day now. I think they're only waiting for confirmation from me and a few of the other testers that pretty much every game that we complained about before is now working. Uh, so just for some examples, um, one of the ones that wasn't working before, a real important one was anything with an FRAM mod in it. So this is a HDR MBC3 flash cart. Um, it's actually the one that the uh, Retro Game Repair Shop carts are based off of. Um, mine has a slightly different silk screen because I I didn't make it for Retro Game Repair Shop at the time. I made it for myself. Um, but this thing didn't work at all. Uh, but it's the same hardware as the ones they sell. And now it seems to be working exactly as intended. Um, I don't have a save on this, that's my bad, but you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, what else we got? I don't think I need to test any of those. And I don't think I need to test any of those. Um, so of course, flash modded OEM carts. Uh, this one has SRAM, unlike my HDR mod, but so otherwise still modified. This wasn't working. Seems to be working now. Um, it kind of takes a lot to... Oh, I forgot I had that flash to it. Um, it takes a lot to test these things because sometimes they don't fail right away. Sometimes you have to get to a certain spot in memory before it starts acting up. Uh, which, oh no, what a nightmare. He has to sit there and play games and Okay, yes, but it's different when you're playing the game to test something and not playing the game for fun. <laughs> but that works. Not a little bit tight. Um, Easy Flash Jr. Compatibility is hit and miss. Mine seems to work, but don't expect yours to. Um, every person I've talked to who has one of these things... Uh, so, like, three other people. None of theirs work. I don't know why mine does, and, like, both of mine do. I have... I have another Easy Flash Jr. and an EverDrive. Oh, wait, no. I can't remember which one it was. It was the EverDrive or the Easy Flash Jr. that wasn't working for them. But both of mine work for me. Um, that being said, sometimes games can be a little, um... Fucky. That's, I'm trying to look for games on the thing and I have two easy flashes and they do not have the same games on them. Yeah, that looks better. So even though a regular Pokemon Silver cart works, if you try booting Pokemon Silver through the Easy Flash, that might not necessarily be the case. If I recall correctly, this thing crashes once you get into a um, Pokemon battle, which is kind of the whole point of the game, so that's a problem. Uh, but of course, it's working fine now, because of course, of course. Uh, but like I said, that's that's compatibility with these types of flash carts. It's totally hit and miss. Some of them work, some of them don't. I would not get one of these things if you're planning on using a cartridge emulator. And that's what Easy Flash and EverDrive are. They are cartridge emulators. Let's try Pokemon Silver on this thing. And like the EverDrive didn't even work on... Um, On one of my buddies. Okay. Look at that. Same ROM, same save, different hardware. Come on. Uh, 
and that one seems to be working too. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's something that the latest um, update has fixed. That's nice if so. I still, like I said, I would be wary about compatibility with um, SD based flashcards. Um, if it works, it works, but don't count on it working. That being said, if you have any single ROM flashcards, like especially Funny Playing's flashcard, uh, that should work no problem out of the box. Ta-da! <gasps> I think this one actually has a save on it. That's why I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> See? Ta-da! I got this ROM and saved direct from uh, Shock Slayer because we were doing some we were doing some technical testing uh, where he modified it. So if you go into the Pokédex and hit Select, you can toggle between double speed mode of the console. Um, we were doing some power usage testing to see if uh, it affected the power usage at all, but it actually turned out to be somewhat convenient because, well. It's, a, it's an esoteric hardware test that um, I wouldn't know how to toggle on this thing otherwise. I just went around in a big circle. I don't even remember where we are. Is this Sprout Tower or something? There we go. I thought there were wild Pokemon in here. Hey, it works. Excellent. Top lettuce. <laughs> anyway. That's enough of that. You get the idea. Uh, good stuff. Um, I did test some other things like the Game Boy camera, which I don't... Oh, wait, I see it. Hang on. <sighs> Sorry. Doing multiple testing. This did not work at all before, and now it seems to work great. Is that the right option? I can never remember. Yeah. See? Hello. Nice and working. Which is a massive step up, because beforehand, you couldn't even boot the darn things. You just got that pattern across the screen no matter what happened. Um, Fortress of Fear is one of my favorite test games, honestly, because I just kind of like the game, uh, but because it's a pure Game Boy game. So like Zass that I have on a flash cart somewhere, uh, this is also a Game Boy game, but I actual I have actual hardware. It's not a flash cart. <laughs> um, it's nice to test Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. You can see... It was a little weird with that bat flying, but let's set this thing to Game Boy mode. And it might have actually been the frame skip that was doing that, but we'll see. Or maybe I'm just totally misremembering how this game works. Yeah, see, there you go. Now he's not blinking in and out. Oh. Anyway, you get the idea. Last one. Oh, let's set, the, oh. set that to Game Boy Color. And then dump in my Nintendo Power Cart and take a look here. This is one that still has compatibility issues, but there's a workaround. So, in my experience, you just boot to a white screen. You can try power cycling. Sometimes that works. Didn't work this time. Uh, but you notice, when it boots to a white screen, the OSD stops too. But if we hot swap the cart, glitches out, and then we can reset it, 
and then it works. <laughs> You can thank Kazi for that one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, from here, like, the compatibility seems totally fine. It's just, it won't start, but as soon as you get it to start, it's going to keep going until you power it off. But I don't actually want to play that right now. Uh, but anyway, I think that's about all I've gotten. Oh, just for funsies, let's do our... I'm totally forgetting what this is called. This is like those four-in-one fun packs or something, but this is a Chinese domestic market exclusive. Um, I bought because I, I thought that was super cool, like mm, Chinese domestic market. But of course, it works totally fine. Um, you might think it's a glitch not showing those other numbers, but that's that's just how this thing works. Everything is totally fine in both modes, as far as I can tell. It's, it's kind of great. Um, rule of thumb seems to be anything that uses RAM on the cartridge itself. Uh, so anything that saves. Where's my crystal? There it is. Anything that has this second chip, compatibility's hit and miss. Anything that doesn't have one whatsoever, it's probably going to be fully compatible in one of the two modes. I don't know what it is. I don't understand the technical know-how, technical details behind it, or anything like that. Um, I'm just, I'm just reporting on things as they are, as, as it were. Uh, but last thing, I've got a copy of Pokemon Silver. This is an OEM copy, and I've got that in my Game Boy there. And then I've got. An OEM copy of Pokemon Silver that we're going to drop in the other Game Boy here. And I am going to boot these up at the same time. The reason being, when I was doing the video on this one, I genuinely didn't notice it the first time through. Um, I thought it sounded off to me, but I was so focused on the fact that it was missing an audio channel, which actually, before we do this test, let me do one more test with 240p. Um, I just want to demonstrate that the audio issue has been fixed. Um, the audio was slow. I could tell that it sounded off, but I could not tell why it was off. I mostly play Game Boy with the volume muted, because most of the time I'm not at home when I'm playing, and I don't really see the point in using headphones for these things, because the audio isn't anything to write home about anyway. But in the case of the early prototype, we only had one channel audio, whereas in 240p test suite, I can ping the right channel and the left channel, and we got audio for both. Let me go ahead and turn that up. And you see, they're both working. Ta-da! Whereas in this one, we only had the left channel, I think it was, which was weird. Or no, we only had the right channel. That was weird, because when you only have mono, it should be the left channel, I think. Something like that. Anyway, um, I haven't timed these things, so I'm just going to boot them up at the same time and see if they uh, desync in the opening. Oh, that's a problem, because they're not timed exactly the same. Let me try this one more time. Took me a little bit longer to hit the power switch on one of them. <laughs> Alright, so this one's already behind, but I it might have just not started properly. I'll even kill these lights. I think what I gotta do is I gotta put a timer ROM on both and then start them both at the same time. That might make things easier. Because I'm fairly certain this is out of sync already quite noticeably. So 
So, yeah, that's probably something that still needs to be fixed, but we'll burn that bridge when we get there, I guess. Uh, I believe 240p test suite has a timer. I'll try that. I hope that was 240p. Yeah, it was. That's not the last thing I booted on this one. I gotta go quick, my phone's almost dead. Okay, I think we can do... Not the lag test. Oh, there's a stopwatch, how about that? That's what I thought. And then we'll let that run for a few seconds and see what happens. You saw they were pretty darn synced at the beginning. Yeah. One of them's already lagging behind, isn't it? So yeah, it's not perfect. Heaps better than it was. Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there, I promise. It's going to be good. Uh, they're going to be nice and inexpensive. They should be relatively widely available. Um, as long as I can convince them to not release it like you did with the RetroPixel Pocket, in that wait till it's done before releasing it, so that it doesn't have to pull them and then revise and then re-release. But anyway, we'll get there. I promise. There will be relevant links in the description, though at the time the video's going up, it's probably just going to be other videos. Um, maybe this shell, if it's still available, I'll check. Um, but otherwise. Yeah, it's still a little bit slow, but honestly, I don't notice that it's slow playing it. I really don't. If you're familiar with the soundtracks for a lot of games, yeah, it's it's going to sound off, though, because of that delay. I don't know. Maybe someone can use this information and calculate exactly how slow it is. I will, um, I'll leave it there. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for sticking with me. I know, I know my upload schedule's been an absolute mess right now. Um, life's been life, and I'm working around it. But this YouTube channel has always been a hobby for me, and unfortunately, I've had to let it take the back seat while I work on some other stuff. But um, hopefully, I'll start getting caught up. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get back to the way it was before. Probably not. Probably nowhere near as frequent uploads. I used to upload like every two or three days. That was, I don't know how the hell I maintained that. Um, but maybe we'll go back to once a week at some point. We'll see. Um, that entirely depends on the content that I have available to me. Uh, so no promises, but I'm working on it. Um, anyway, I'm hanging in there. I hope you all are doing all right too. And uh, thanks for putting up with me while I talk about this ridiculously uh, neat piece of tech. And I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.